Hi everyone, this is Hope with Embellish and HopeYoder.com and I wanted to show you a quick tutorial on using the chenille feature inside of Embellish Maker software. What you're looking at here is just an applique design, applique suite kitchen fun. And so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using designs from this CD. Don't worry if you don't own these designs, the same principles work with any applique designs. So in this exercise, I'm going to take the apple and then I could take um, the cherries and turn them into chenille. So let's close this out. And if you haven't uh, visited the RNK Software Club, I encourage you to do so. Register your software and your serial numbers here so you can get all these great training videos. So I have a page open by going under File and Open. I'm going to then select my applique designs. And so I'll come into Open. And we're going, let me delete this uh, design here. And I'm going to just take the apple to start with. Now, one thing I'm going to need to do, anytime you open an applique design that you want to turn into chenille, it only will work if you put a check mark into convert to outlines. So then we'll select open and convert to outlines. This is what that does. It gives you all the little stitching segments inside of one color. And that's what we need to create chenille. All right, so if we take a look at this apple, we have a heart inside of the apple. And I wanna stitch the heart over chenille, but I don't think I want this heavy uh, satin stitch. That would be a little bit overkill and add too much bulk. So let's find that heavy satin stitch and it's going to be down even further. And we'll scroll down and right here it is. So I'm gonna take this section and I am going to um, delete it. And I don't need that as either, so I'll delete that, and I'll just keep deleting the sections that I don't need. Whoops, went a little too far. All right, let me go back. Here's a little shortcut. Notice all of these things are open, and now you have to scroll up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and collapse all. Now, for any applique, what you're going to want to do is find the placement line for the applique, and right here it is. Let me close this out, and let me just change this to something uh, in a different color. So my placement line, I need to select it, and then I'm gonna travel to the left side of the screen and come under Convert. I'm gonna expand that, and then I'm gonna select my chenille tool. Now I want you to notice there's only one straight stitch placement line here, but the minute I select chenille, I get a tack down and chenille added to it. So let's just show you what this looks like. This is our slow redraw. And so color number one is going to be the placement line for the chenille fabric. So at this step, my machine would stop. I would have stitched this on stabilizer and fabric that was hooped. I would have a red piece of fabric and I would have ironed foolproof repositionable webbing on the back, removed the release paper, and then placed my apple red fabric over the placement line. If I don't have a digital cutter, I'm gonna to need to trim after the second color. Let's continue on. So the second color is going to be the tack down. At this point, I'm going to trim right outside of the apple stitching, close to the stitching line. The good news is about this is you don't have to trim super close because the chenille is very fluffy and has high texture. So it's gonna cover this line, which means if you didn't trim close enough, nobody's gonna see it. At this point, then I would take my iron and I would fuse the webbing so it's uh, done. Now, before I stitch the third color, which are these channels, I'm going to lay down three pieces of red fabric that are a little bigger than my apple, and I'm gonna lay them down. All the right sides are facing me, and there's nothing on the back of the fabric. This is just plain cotton fabric, or you can get some of that beautiful double gauze fabric. Three layers before I start stitching the channels. Now, once I do that, you're not gonna trim the chenille channels. 
until the design is completely done. So let's keep stitching. We're going to do a little tack down. Um, and actually that tack down I'm going to need to remove because it will close off my channel. So we'll find that in a minute. Then I'm going to stitch my heart. Now this heart happens to be an applique. So I can either leave the chenille channels exposed or I can lay another piece of fabric over it. So once I've stitched that, I'm good to go. But I noticed that that little uh, zigzag stitch here, I need to get rid of it. If I don't, when I go to cut and trim inside of here, the end is going to be sealed. So we'll just simply delete that and now I'm ready to go. So with this design, this is going to look great. When I'm done stitching, then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim right up the middle here and here. And I'll trim to here and I'll stop at the heart and I'll continue on the top of the heart. And I'll trim down the middle, stop, jump over, trim, trim up this, oops, up the center. And I will just keep trimming inside of those channels. This is going to look awesome. Now I could also add some text. So if I'm loving this design, which I think I would, I'm going to save it. So the next step is to save it as a WAF file, save as, and I would probably create a new folder and I would call them chenille. And I'm going to open this folder because I don't want to save over my original design. So I'll just add chenille. Notice WAF. That is the native file so I can edit that chenille if I need to. Then I need to save it a second time. File, save as, and now I'm going to select whatever embroidery format I need to stitch this out. Beautiful. So that is how you add chenille, uh, chenille to an existing shape. So let's close this all out again and let me show you real quick with the cherries. So step number one is open the design and we'll find the cherries and make sure convert to outlines is selected. And we'll open this up and I am going to find the cherry placement line. I'm going to delete the tack down line and I don't want the satin stitch line. So let's find that. Actually, I don't need this one either, so let me delete that. And let's find that heavy red satin stitch for the cherries. And that is all in here. So I'm going to keep everything except for this one. I'm going to delete it. Notice that leaves the little highlights there. And let's scroll down. Perfect, and of course it's probably the last one here. Nope, we need to find this section. Oh, got rid of the red here, so it must be just within this section. So I wanna keep that, I wanna keep that, I wanna keep that. That I don't want. So I can right click to delete segments. And let's go back up here to find that extra part right here. I'm going to right click to delete it. And notice this part is all grouped together. So I can right click here. I may have to go in stitch by stitch to delete this. And to do that, I'm going to come under the edit field. And this would be our stitches. So I can delete and grab Whoops, all of those stitches if I want to. But I think that's going to take a lot of time and I'm into quick and fast. So what I would do in this case is simply this. Decide, you know what? I don't think I really care about deleting um, the individual sections. Let's come back here again. Right click and then delete. Ah, there we got it. I'm not sure what I did before, but now I have the little highlights and the cherries and I have uh, the stems and everything that I want. Now, as a recap, we want to close all of this up. I'm going to right click and collapse all. 
go back and find the placement line to the cherries, which is here. We'll zoom in a little bit. Come under Convert, Chenille. Again, it's added the placement and the chenille. Now, one thing you can also do, if I want those cherries, let's click on 3D. I think the cherry line should go the other direction. And I'll come into Properties, and I can do negative 60 to make them go the other way. So I'm liking the way this looks. I will do File, Save As, and we'll call it Cherries, and we'll add underscore chenille. And notice I'm keeping it at WAF, and then I'll save it a second time into the format that my embroidery machine needs. So there you have it. You can take any embroidery design that's an applique and quickly fill it with chenille. Don't worry if you stitch over the chenille, that's gonna be fine. Now, as I'm looking at this and concluding the video, I probably would get rid of this white area. I don't think I want to cover. I think I'd rather have the fluff rather than the white stitching over the chenille. So I'm going to simply delete and save it again. And now I'm going to have some beautiful fluffy cherries. So this is how you can take an existing shape from an applique design and quickly fill it with chenille. Until next time, happy stitching.